Welcome back to Face to Facts. I am Nick Face. We have another wonderful episode coming your way. Joining me to my left once again is our, our normal cast. The cast is all back. We have Tom here in the middle. Welcome back, Tom. Featuring the Tampa Bay Devil Rays hat. There's a throwback. Notice, notice, notice how you said devil, not just raise. It's not devil oh, anymore. It's yeah, raise. That's right. Why? Why do they tell you devil? Did they ever say? Because stingrays aren't devils, apparently. Oh, or they're not. It's a Florida thing. Oh, okay. Not, they don't represent Satan. <laughs> they were too Satan? sensitive. They were they too say? sensitive and putting the word devil in. As with yes. every, as with every sport logo. And then we have but Phil. Still, we have the Indians. Yeah. <laughs> and the Phil Rose Well, they we got rid of that. Here they as well. Chief. Welcome, Phil. Oh, hey, well, yeah, you doing? Welcome. So, yes, Tom featuring that hat with everything. Tom's up to 74 hats for his collection now. He I lives guess. a sad, sad life. <laughs> More <laughs> the best life if you're a hat. <laughs> that is the best I life. Yeah, I mean. Well, anyway, this is our holiday season. We have a lot of things that are going on. This should be our last show of 2018. Yeah, I'd imagine. That um, sheds a tear in my eye, I should say. Um, we'll be going on when we start in 2019. 13 years. Oh, wow. We'll be a teenager. Well, how many years have you been doing 2006. it? 2006. Uh, oh, wow. Well, how many years here at NORCAM? Since 2014. Wow, so that, it'll be like a five year anniversary. That'll be a five coming year up. anniversary. That's crazy. That's a big man. year. And we, and we filmed the 50th episode here, so. Oh, 2019 is crazy. also the 10 year anniversary for Sports Zone as well. So. Wow, this is a milestone, man. It is a milestone year. Coming up. Well, we have. Three teams that need to be talked about. We can actually talk about the Red Sox a little because they were at the winter meetings. Kind of wish I was in Las Vegas last week. That's where their winter meetings were. Cool. And we'll talk about that because there's a signing that needs to be discussed. But we want to start mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. with the crappy New England Patriots. No, I mean, what can you say? I mean, the past two weeks has just been an absolute disaster. They've um, completely choked. Mm -hmm. They've not executed. They've been undisciplined. They seem like children that get really hyped up right before the Thanksgiving, I mean, the Christmas holiday and mm -hmm. all, and they just can't, like, control themselves. Well, most of them are, like, children. They are, most of them. A lot of them are young team, players. Yeah. Yeah. But my overall analysis from it is it's a very, very disappointing turn of events for them. But amazingly, they're still in contention for winning their division and, and getting seed. at the playoffs and being okay. Well, even, even the second seed, right? Third seed right now. They're third, third seed but they now, can also get everything. the second. Yeah. Well, they had a big chance to get the second seed with Houston losing, Kansas City well, losing. They had a big chance to get the first seed oh, two yeah. weeks ago. Well, let's look at the Miami <laughs> game first because I was watching with my family, and they ha we have the red zone. And one of my uncles and cousins are very much into the Chiefs. They oh, okay, lived in yeah. Kansas City for a while. So the Chiefs were playing the... Hmm. Chargers or no? Titans. Oh, I, no, 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 no. They were playing the Texans. Chiefs and Texans were two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. And we were rooting for oh, the Texans. I'm naturally, sure, yeah. the Texans to do something, and then lo and behold, the Chiefs ended up winning. Oh um, yeah, that was a, a close game too. Well, very close, like 24-20, yeah. something like yeah. that. And Houston was down big too for a little bit. We mm -hmm. fl flicked the game. I mean, the Patriots just got their field goal, and we were yeah. mad that they didn't score to score the touchdown, yeah. but they went for the kick. And I kept saying to myself there, why are we kicking? They're going to give Miami like 15 or so seconds left. Yeah. All you needed to do was take the knee and be in victory formation. You win the game. Is that, oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they, how much, they were up by how much? They were up at that They point. were down by one before the field goal. Yeah, the pass. No, they yeah. weren't. They were up 30 to 28. No, you're. they were up by one. I think they were up by one. We don't even, they didn't they even necessarily score. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They were they didn't up have by one. to. Yeah. And then we're watching on the TV and all. But did they have another? And oh, I'm like, yeah, oh, clock's yeah. expired. Oh, another win. But did they Let's have get, another bring out the hats, out? blah, blah, no? blah. And then we look and we turn the chin and we go, what the heck just happened? Like, just like that. I don't know. It was pretty spectacular. I was kind of blown away. I mean, the play was awesome. Let's not, like, it, it sucked for us. Well, not only yeah. was it, like... A, was it more unbelievable or pathetic on Patriots' end? Uh, uh, I don't think pathetic. I mean, it's just more, like, they should have tackled a couple times, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, that should never happen well, to them. And, the, and the, but, the, fact, the fact that it was Bolden that was the one that ended up... Wasn't no, uh, it was no. Drake. He made a big Drake. play on he them anyway. But, yeah. And he was pretty. He was pretty big all game. Yeah, Brandon Bolden, who was a player 
that the Patriots loved. He was a special was, team member, was. one of the one of the more unsung hero types. And on he was the like team. the fourth. Uh, Plus, got two touchdowns, ran back, wild yeah. against the Patriots. Again, former Patriots coming back to kill the Patriots. Um, Unless you're Danny Amendola. That, yeah. That, yeah, true. But I'd still take him on the t- Patriots team, true. anyways. But we could have used him. Please <laughs> explain to me how you allow Gronkowski to be on defense. No one knows the situations that you got going on with him with bad backs and ankles. And well, I mean, I think you know. I mean, what you know it. I mean, just like, what do you think they're going to do? Do you think they're going to... Who would have yeah. thought they would have ran it? I would have never known. I would have never guessed that. I mean, they the Dolphins, credit the Dolphins on coming up with a oh, kind of I mean, crafty it's fi- play, I, I'm fine with crediting them. It's the fact of the matter that you have Ryan Tannehill, who yeah. has a bad ankle... Bad leg and all, bad shoulder. Okay. Thinking he's gonna th- uncork a hail mary in that game. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, huh? yeah, I don't. No, I think you're looking at it in a weird hindsight. <laughs> really, I mean, no, because what else? He's could, overthinking this. <laughs> no, no, I mean, like if you keep your one of you your best defenders really, on the sideline, which is Devin, Devin McCourty, McCourty which that's and put Gronkowski in. Yeah, to not. I mean, what they do all the time for like hail marys like that. They do. They do that all the time. Oh, my goodness. But they I'm could just... have taken somebody else out. There's, there you were... know, sure. You know, I'll give you that. But I mean, they also yes, could have tackled... You, there's all these second guesses Break it like the 50 or the 40. They could have tackled them two or three times. How do you allow that to happen? Because the Patriots can't stop the run this year. The Patriots are just... It, it's. This team reminds me a lot of the year that Brady wasn't there. The 2008-2009 season. That 11-5 and run that yeah. we had and we didn't make the playoffs. Sure, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to... They remind me more of, like, the... The 2007 team that couldn't tackle Eli Manning seven times? No, they, oh, they, no, they were, I, what, 16-0? and 0? Like, yep. 10, Whatever it was. Uh, like, 10 or 11. I forget which one. No, 10 was, like, they were 14-2. and two. What was the one where they were, like... They lost the wild card. Buffalo in the wild... Or, not Buffalo, I'm sorry. Baltimore, Baltimore. in the wild card. 2006. Which time? No, <laughs> that was no. six. No. Maybe that was the 2010. It was, it it was, was like right after that. It was the 2010. They lost yeah. at Gillette. Yep, yeah, they lost right. at Gillette. And yep. Randy Moss was still on the team. Yep. And that was like, you could tell that's kind that of was the it. end. That yeah. was it for him. I do remember The following that. season, he was in there for a couple games. Any more analysis from that, uh, the, the Miami? Dolphins game? Yeah, the Miami Dolphins game. No, the, I think. Oh, the, oh, well, the play where um, at the end of the first half. Where Brady. Oh, he threw it away. Brady threw oh, it no, away. Or no. You're right. He got sacked. He got sacked. Yep, I do remember that because we should have scored before the half and we didn't because Brady was not in it or no. for some reason. He did not look good. He that had a first mental half. hiccup. He didn't look good that first half at all. Let's fast forward to Sunday's game against the Steelers. Steelers had more to play for. Do we do we agree? Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. agree on that. The sure. game was at Heinz Field. That was in Pittsburgh. Um, the Steelers did not have James Conner, one of their running backs, in the game. Mm-hmm. I Baltimore felt was good. on the verge of winning their game, too, right? Right. Yeah. I felt pretty good heading into this game, thinking, okay, we just had a bad loss in Miami. We're 11-2 we career got something to against prove. Pittsburgh. Let, what are we going to do here? Huh. That game from the very beginning was disgusting. and dis- It was probably one of the worst well, executed games I've seen the Patriots play because they looked so lost and unprepared. I wouldn't I wouldn't say from the beginning because it looked like they were going to... Roethlisberger like, scored right away, did he not? True, but then uh, Chris Hogan had that 63-yard catch for a touchdown. It looked like, okay, maybe the Patriots are going to yep. like win this. Yes, it didn't look good on defense, but usually they don't look good right at the, from the start on defense anyway. But And that was like the first time Pittsburgh scored first in the last four games that they played the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it looked like, okay, 63-yard catch, Chris Hogan, all right, let's Maybe get some momentum okay. going. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll be okay. And then it just kind of all fell apart after that. What did you see, Phil? I only actually heard part of the um, end of the first half and some of the third quarter, and I watched part of the fourth. Okay. So it's pretty bad about this. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm here to talk about it. Excellent. Perfect. <laughs> but, no, I, no you, fit in with, I, you fit in well with some New Englanders. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I, from what I was listening, what I was seeing, like, you know, Brady was a bit sloppy. Uh, the penalty situation, which I saw later. That was terrible. Well, I mean, just the response where whether you feel like they were, I don't think they were getting hosed, but it just felt like, oh, mm. man, they couldn't, get, they couldn't get it done while the, uh, the crowd was going. Yep. Uh, that uh, Shaq Mason penalty 
on like the killed five. Them. Yeah. Killed them. No, it did. I mean, and they had the momentum. They were going. They were going to uh, draw. And that was the first time in the fourth quarter when they were down there. And they could have gone. They didn't they get anything. Oh, for three in the red zone that game. Oh. Wow, that, really? That, that's mm-hmm. my biggest concern yeah, right it, now, I mean, gonna... is the fact that they get down to the field. It was the Miami game they didn't do well with. What was mm-hmm. the game we had before? Even the Vikings game. Yeah, they didn't do too good in the Vikings. The Tennessee the game. The red zone area, did. we're at the 10-yard line. Heck, even the 5-yard line. Yeah. And we're going back and back and back, and we have to deal with a field goal. We can't have that happen. No, they need someone who can... Um, they need a uh, like Eric Blount. I know that sounds weird, but they need someone we like a brick house. We don't have a thumper. We don't. No. And we, I know we all kind of joked about like Legarrette like Blunt not being as important. He, I mean, I did enjoy him because he could just plow so right through. At this point in the season, that's when he's needed the most. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, great. We don't need him for the first eight games of the season. But yeah. like when it starts to get down to the grind, it gets colder. You, you need somebody. Who's your goal line rusher right now? James White, you maybe? You don't have anybody. You don't have anybody. Uh, Devlin or Burke. Oh, actually, you know what? It's You're really right. been Devlin. Devlin. Yeah. But even then, like, I. I but they, they haven't even. To... They, they gave. I think he had three touches in that game against the Steelers. I don't think he had any against Miami. In the goal line? No, and, he had in the. Or maybe he had one in Miami. I think he had two touchdowns in Miami. No, the big game he had was against the Vikings, if I remember correctly. That's right. Correct. Yeah, he had two, two touchdowns, touchdowns against yeah. the Vikings. But yeah. did they. Ha- at the goal line, did he touch it at all? No. Against no. the Steelers? Nope. Nope. No. Yeah. I, I like Sonny Michelle, but Sonny Michelle yeah. reminds me too much of Dion Lewis. He's good for yeah. you know driving the ball down the field. He get his big big uh, oh, yards and big defenseman. runs. But when it gets down to the ten yard line or less, you're not putting him out there because he's not gonna. It's not his job. Yeah. He's not a grinder. So the, that, that's a big struggle, and they got to figure that out because I don't see anybody there on the team that can do that. Unfortunately, well, it's funny. Last time we talked about the Patriots, we were saying, oh, like they're running the ball more often, and then it seems like the last two games they've been trying to pass the ball, and it's just not working out for them. Me looking at the game from at least the first half, I was more frustrated with the defensive performance than the offense. But as the second second half went on, the defense adjusted, Mm -hmm. and the offense didn't even show up after the first half. I can't figure out right now what I'm more concerned with. Usually I can make an analysis and make a, you know, a snap judgment call on how I'm feeling. I feel right now there's too many concerns for this team to go anywhere. Well, I mean, if you think Who about... Who the heck cares for me? I'm, I'm not done yet. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not done ranting. I'm, I'm almost done. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Who the heck cares about the Buffalo and the Jets game? If the Patriots don't win those games, they're not even in. So I look at those in a way as that, that's a cakewalk. Should be. They're going to yeah, have we'll to be. See. Well, they'll be at home, right? If you don't, exactly. That, the big struggle has been on the road. They have not won on the road. Plain and simple, yeah. haven't done it. When you're home, it's a different story. You've been fine. When is this team going to adjust? <laughs> if they're going to adjust. Uh, well, if they can't or they don't, it's going to be scary playoffs. Yeah. If, if they don't get yeah. a good playoffs. Season. We're talking playoffs. Well, yeah, no, like Tom <laughs> said, I mean, it doesn't. They either do it or they don't. I mean, there's no real. Well, I mean, if we look at it, we thought Miami was most likely going to be a cakewalk. Yeah, Miami might do something spectacular in the game, but we, no one probably thought that we they were going to win. And you scored how many points off of them? Like 34 points. The amount of points that you allowed for Miami to score was pathetic. Yeah. Well, I mean, but also that team is horrible. Yeah, but you also were able to hang how many points on them. So, I mean, yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, defensively, it wasn't good. But, sorry, what was your second point? Offensively, it was decent. Hmm. Well, then, and then Pittsburgh, everybody thought that they were going to win. I mean, they have a career, since Brady started, I think, is um, they have a career record of 11 and, well, 11 and 3 now against them. But going into the game, it's 11 and 2. Pittsburgh has never scored first against them in the last, like, three games that they had played against them. And then, um... Like, Roethlisberger looks terrible against the Patriots when he's played against them. So, it, you're they're looking at the stats line, and the stats line is saying the, the Patriots are going to win this game. doesn't matter what happens, they're going to win. But then you get 14 penalty calls, which I think some of them were... Ticky-tack. Yeah. They're, it was definitely... It looked like they were against the Patriots. There were some that were missed that should have been called against the Steelers. Mm-hmm. But would that have won them the game? Who knows? Yeah, they but had enough chances to... It, it, there's... They're, 
like the last four games of the season, the games that like everybody expects the Patriots to win, no matter who it is yeah. that they're playing, unless it's maybe the Chiefs, but like still. Hey man, anything to say from the rest of that game? Because I want to ask a question after we're done talking. Well, they about could this they game. could clearly do, the red zone difficulties are I think the biggest thing you have to be concerned about. I, I, that's what that's like high priority for me. Well, well because they the can fact, drive. Down plus the, the field. fact that we didn't hear like how many times did you hear Gronk's name? Being commentated not over much the game. on not much right. on uh, Sunday. I'll tell you that. Yeah, last like, three times. Got a great maybe. game against Miami. Yeah, yeah, he had a decent one. Which is like I think, I don't know. Maybe it's just the road. Maybe it's just they, when they get down there, they get frazzled. Or maybe Brady's getting older than everybody expected. Sure. So red I zone, mean, red zone is I a mean, big concern for me. But I will say that from Sunday, if certain things happened that were different, meaning catch the damn ball. Yeah. Things could have been different for the Patriots. Julian Whoa. Edelman is a massive problem for this team right now. No, that's a Catch good... the damn ball. And him and Gordon. Gordon had it wide open. Jesus. Whistling on the radio like a slant. That got me most frustrated from Sunday, I have to say, was the amount of times that Brady would connect with Edelman, hits him here in the chest, and he drops it. This, this has gone on for over a month now, yeah. and it needs to be corrected. Well, you should give him a call. Oh. Let him know. I'm going to throw tweet out, out his jersey. Tweet out to him. Now. Get blocked. Yeah. Well. <laughs> where where no, was that's... Josh Gordon? What, what's his problem? No, but you're right. Like, the Edelman is stuff's he, not is, just is, this Is game. he sitting under a mango tree doing you know what again? I don't know what the mango tree is. Uh, it used but, to be like... a Ricky Williams uh, line. Oh, he I'm, used to Oh, he used, he used to, to smoke mm, dope mm, under mm, a mango oh, tree? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what he wanted to you do. You don't have to cover it up. Quarter hour family-friendly show, remember. I mean, but yeah, I know plenty of families who do it together. That's right. Cordell Patterson and Chris Hogan were the names that we heard a lot making big plays. Cordell Patterson has been a, a, a breath of fresh air for this team. And I think that Brady's got more trust with him and everything, and he's producing. Do you think they'll incorporate him? And this is the thing about the playoffs that I love what the Patriots always do. They always incorporate some weird or wacky uh, bit of, like, none of this crap is working. Let's throw everything out there. Like, well, you know, we shouldn't even be talking about the playoffs right now. We no, that's, <laughs> you know, I, honestly, that's a fair. I think they'll win at least one of the next two games. I, I think they're in. It's yeah. just I don't feel great about it. They could technically still get the second seed, can't they? If I have to say, Houston yes, they could. Houston loses the game? Yes, if Tex the lose? Texans got to lose one, game. one of the Houston's games. Houston's Patriots not gotta looking win too good either. So. Well, he, who are they? Here's the thing, though. All right. Who are they no playing? One, who, nobody looks good. Right? No, uh, Kansas it's been a City weird. and San Diego, or L.A. look pretty decent. Patriots have proven that they can beat Kansas City. Yeah, I don't know if they can do it in Kansas City this year. Hmm. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. It's been a weird year in the NFL. Who knows what's going to happen, The honestly. Saints? You feel good know. about the Saints? Uh, I think <laughs> it'll be interesting. I think, uh, listen, yeah, maybe you're right. I think they're, you're they're wrong. a notorious choke artist. All the, the time. Oh, peaked, yeah. They peaked in week yeah. 10, and they're starting to go on. The I will say, they, yeah. just do it all, they do it all the time. Yeah. I mean, look at how many times the Drew Brees has had a team in the playoffs. Well, except for 2009. No, he's had, I mean. And choked. Yeah, I guess. I mean, He reminds me of Aaron Rodgers so much. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would say they that's both. That's a whole other topic right there. Yeah, that's <laughs> I think that's something, uh, something crazy, too, but very similar in the sense where their teams around them aren't necessarily built to win championships all the I time. Agree. I and agree. And they have to that. shoulder yeah. the kind of bulk of it. Not to be a Rod I'm not as much of a Rogers apologist as I am a Breeze apologist, because Breeze always is able to do what he, you know, what he can. He always, you always see it in his eyes. Not to say Rogers is competitive, but you know, you can see Rogers dog, dogging at the last like season or two. Yeah. Hmm. Do you believe in the L.A. Chargers? Um. I'll give it. Oh boy. I'll give it a thumbs up. I. Philip uh, Rivers. Philip Rivers is the kind of quarterback where you look at him and you say. He's going to have his 25th kid. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's going to be a granddad he, by the time he's 38. He, he, could be, he could be an all-star. But at the same time, you look at him and you're like, this guy's a dud. Like, you don't know which Phillip Rivers you're going to get to, whether it's going into one game or going into a different season. I mean, clearly, like, he's a stud. <laughs> Put him out the pasture. This, this, I mean, this season, he's... Look good. He's looked bad. He's looked outstanding. He's looked god off. I mean, let, I think their defense is really good. Good too. for him. Good for the team and all. I'm sorry, but you are nothing but a bunch of frauds. What in what in what way? They don't win. I mean, they've clearly won like <laughs> ten or eleven. Yeah, what are they? Ten and uh... recently. Well, I mean, sure. And they've had coaches in the. Do past you remember the Marty done. Schottenheimer? It was like 2006, seven oh, season, yeah, whatever course, it was. Of course, and the Patriots came in and said, "Sayonara, we win." Yeah, no, in 2000. Oh, that was in 2008, actually. That was the. No, no, no. You're right. 2007 playoffs. Yep. 
They came in, yeah. They came in and they uh, they stole a game. They sure did. Then well, the in L. A. They're the AFC choke artist. New Orleans is the NFC yeah. choke artist. But like, I mean, Kansas City is the NFC or yeah. the AFC, whatever you West call it, AFC or, North, South, whatever. Well, they're West too, I believe. But, they're the West, yes. But I think like this is all bets are off now because I think you legit have. You, you could say the top. Where are your top three teams in the AFC? Mine would probably be Kansas City, uh, uh, L.A., Chargers, and tie between the Pats and uh, Houston. But maybe even throw Tennessee in there. I've got to say, I'm still Tennessee's shocked. Tennessee's kind of a dark horse. And we've had two real bad losses back-to-back. I still give the Patriots a legit chance. No, well, I don't think they're out of the woods. I, they're out of the woods. I, that, that's what's amazing to me. The, the thing that... If they pull it together, yeah. The, the thing that... Um, gets me is Kansas City has a rookie quarterback mm-hmm. going into the, his first playoffs, and we all know like this like what happens when a rookie goes into the playoffs and whatever. They don't have the experience. I don't think Mahomes could lead a team to the Super Bowl, whether he has to get through the Patriots or not. Hey. Andy Reid certainly won't. <laughs> Andy Reid is the choke artist of all coaches. He is. <laughs> Mahomes might win despite Andy Reid. Yeah. But that might be, he might have enough talent That's to gonna carry him on That's going to take a lot of talent. He would, he would get lucky. There's no way he could call a game in the playoffs, whether he's at home or not. That is, it is kind of depressing how, what do we do, coach? Well, give me that uh, 10 pound bag of chicken <laughs> yep. and let's get this decision started. <laughs> yep. But yeah, give me 10 minutes to call a timeout or something. Yeah. It just, the time management on that guy or that sucker is insane. But I do think their team is talented enough to overcome his uh, kind of. I don't. I don't know. I, I, mean, I don't like, think Mahomes is going to be able to call a game they, they and have lead a the buy. team. They'll be at home. They need one game to get into. That's the, the other thing too. They have a bye. They're going. They're going to go yeah. into the second game with a bye, with a week off, an entire week off. Right. Another week, position, an extra yeah. week off. He's gonna. His. He's gonna be off his game, especially if. Oh, he's, you think if, The oh. only team that's been successful recently in past years with that bye week and been able to produce from is the Patriots. Yep. No other team who really sits out for that first week has been successful with getting back into the I same rhythm. I mean, I guess rhythm. Pittsburgh lost last year, but they're usually... I mean, last year they lost, but the year before, were they uh, wild card or did they... I mean, I'm sure there are others, I think but... like wild card or something like that. I know last year they had a bye. Um, I think you guys will be in the same predicament that I am right now. There's been a lot of people calling for, this is it for Brady, this is it for the team. I mean, it might that. be. How are you feeling on that? I'll save um, my opinion after we... Is this it for Brady? Is the decline we're seeing concerning enough to say, throw in the, throw in the towel, he's all done? I wouldn't say it's a concern. I would say if um, with the decline going the way it is, I think he's doing it maybe to get the team ready to move on without him to see how to show Belichick and Kraft how the team's going to be if he's not there. I mean, I don't know why he would purposely like no, play his, wor- his worst like, hurt. football, but some, there's, yeah, there's something going on where he's something, something mentally. I mean, you see him changing his helmet throughout the season. He's worn the new, more protective helmet in some games. He's worn his old helmet in other games. So, I mean, I think it's... It for him. I think it's it for Gronk. I think after this season, they are done. Been done too. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he if he one does. Of them hangs it up, I think. They there's all three of them are injury prone. I don't think they they could last another full season. I'm gonna read a tweet that I had. Um, that this is clean. Don't worry. Um, that I had made. That a lot of people are. Are, are liking and, and thinking that, you know, it was something that was decent that was said. Let me bring it up if I can find it. And it was, oh, to, to, to uh, Portnoy, I go, Patriots 2018-2019 season over, question mark. Brady will retire along with Gronk and Edelman. That was my statement that I put after I the mean, game. that's fairly likely. It depends if they end up, if things end up badly, I think that'll definitely be it. If it ends up where they actually make a good run in the postseason, I think either way, I think it might be the end. But it depends on how uh, acrimonious it'll be, you know, how they land. And I think they Next can make it back to the Super Bowl. Next year, it could be a completely different Patriots team. It could be. 
It I mean, could very well be. But be this also know. could be another year where we're saying, oh, well, don't worry about now because we're going to turn it on when the playoffs come and we're going to be successful and win another championship. That wouldn't surprise me at all. That would still wouldn't surprise me. They could make I'm a so, run. I, I, I'm a C, so I can't balance out right now on decisions to make. Well, you still have two well, regular season, gonna happen. and then you have you have a chance to have a buy again. You have a chance. It's so unpredictable. I mean, especially with we, this we season. We could pull a name out of a hat or yeah. a helmet right now in the NFL and say, "Oh, you're the Super Bowl champion. You're this. You're that." There's no clear favorite. I mean, in the NFC, I think there's a clear favorite, but who knows if they'll win it? You got to get there. You got to go. Well, you have to make. And yeah. then San Francisco, didn't they beat Seattle this past weekend? Yeah, they did. Yeah. So it's, the, like, it's like, what's going Bears, on in the NFL? The yeah, Bears and the Bears are like, yeah, the Bears clinched the NFC North since the first time since 2010. Who knows? Like, well, you know what? Listen. And it's I, a headache talking about it. No, no, you but just it, can't, you but it's can't a lot figure of fun. out what's going to go on. But it's great because there's no, I mean, the Patriots are the only one who's been this kind of, them, the Steelers, and. Let's say Denver have been the t- three teams in the AFC who have been like there. Yeah. And even Denver's really not been there. But Denver's they even have a shot too. to make the playoffs, too. Yeah, they're still like in there somehow, some yeah. way. Them, the Dolphins. I'm actually rooting for well, You've got to see a 7-9 what's... and nine team make the playoff. I'll tell you that. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I know people With hate ties. it, but I love yeah. it. Yeah. I, the yeah. Redskins are doing decent. Like, yeah. I don't know what's going on. With a rookie quarterback, yeah. right? I don't know what's going on in football anymore. But I uh, listen, and we will, we're going to get our just desserts with that camera. We're going to, all you Patriots fans, we're going to get it tenfold. It's going to suck, yeah. but we're going to, we need this and we deserve to fall very far down the totem pole because this is, it's been great. Mm. It's, I've had a great I've been time. waiting for it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you I've should, been for and it. you should clamor for it. Want to know why? Because it's going to be so much sweeter and maybe 30 years are on your deathbeds like, I just want one more. <laughs> and then and it's I'm like, oh, then this out of left field. <laughs> not anytime soon. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows my lifestyle? We'll see. I live fast. Win, 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 <laughs> win, uh, and more win. Do your job. So, yeah. let's go to the Bruins next. The Bruins are the team that I'm still surprised at how they're playing, even with, with people that have been out. So, this week we've had the Canadians so far. The Canadians, the Bruins got a nice win. Was it 4-zip? 4-zip. Against uh, Claude and Hala, his Foles. Yep. <laughs> had, had, had another It was a uh, nice bounce-back bounce back game because there was a game on uh, or, uh, last week, which was on the Sunday against the Sabres, that and they probably shouldn't have lost. And they lost because the refs are ridiculous. That goal that Marchand put in and the, and the quick whistle was blown was... Um, a really terrible call, I have to say. I see a lot of quick whistles blown against the Bruins. When and I don't get it puck. with the NHL because wouldn't you want to see more teams score? You would. You wouldn't would, you, you think? would think, but at the same time, you want to make sure that the goalie doesn't get hurt, well, especially after that big hit on uh, Ryan Miller by Lucic years ago. Um, What's our overall thoughts on the Bruins right now? What do you got to say? If they can play like this without Bergeron and Chara and make a decent season out of it, then by all means, go right ahead because you're just going to look 10 times better next season. Bergeron is going to be back probably right around Christmas time. Yeah, they're saying, He's skating they're saying now. next week. McAvoy is back. He had a bad cheap hit that was against, um, what's his name from Toronto? Um, Kadri. Kadri hit him. Um, he's okay. He's been back out in the ice. Tory Krug's been really good since he's been back. You have Kevin Miller, who's, stu- who's still down. He got the puck in the throat. Was mm-hmm. that correct? Yep. I'm a little concerned here with DeBrusque because he's been out for a bit. He's got a head injury. When do you think that we'll see him return? Did I surprise you with that? Did I you know that. I didn't know about that. Yes, he's been out um, for a bit. He's not skating right now. I would say probably closer to the end of January. It's I'm looking mid, right around there. Um, that's a big loss for the team. They need him Dude. back. I'm a big yep. DeBrusque fan. They, they need his grit, his intensity, his style of hockey on the ice. I'm really liking that Krejci, Pasternak, uh, Marsh online, though. Is, I think Krejci's having a much better year now He's than he did last off. year. Whole lot more improved being on that line than he has being the second line centerman. So is that a result with being with Pasternak? Do you think that's why? 
Um, what do you do when Bergeron comes back? Because Krejci's going to most likely get well, moved. It's good that you bring that up because they were talking about it pregame last night, and Billy Jaffe said that they should have Bergeron and Marshan on the same line and Krejci and Pasternak on the same line, and I think he was thinking along the same lines as you because... I like Billy Jaffe. We're, fri- I, we're friends on Twitter. We like all of our posts. You haven't alienated him yet? Huh? You haven't alienated him <laughs> I would, yet? No, I, I'm hoping he has Honestly, a nice daughter. Out of all the, oh, his what? I'm hoping he has a nice daughter. Hey, Honestly, out of all the pregame commentators on Nesson, Billy, uh, for the Bruins, Billy Jaffe is probably the best. I like Billy. He's, yeah. he's, he, he's got a good sense a of the game. It. He knows... I mean, I like Barry too, but like Billy, yeah, Billy, Billy just makes, knows his stuff. analyzes yeah. it, uh, breaks it down like Dale to the... Dale Arnold is a weasel. Oh, I like this already. Don't yes. mention Dale Arnold. I, <laughs> oh, he is, yeah. I Chip and Dale cannot <laughs> stand him. I used to grow up listening to him in... Um, oh, God. Numi. Dale and Numi. Yeah, you know, even before that. He had, oh, Dale and Eddie, Ed, Ed, Eddie yes. Ed, Edelman. Yes. Is that what you yeah. call him? Yeah, them? I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dale and Ed, yeah. Dale and Ed. And Newby as well. Newby was great. Yeah. But no, yeah, he is. He does feel and look like a weasel. Like, I, I if you if him. you told him a secret about some sort of money somewhere, yeah. he would t- he would you know he'd give you up to the FBI or something. Like he'd roll <laughs> over like nothing. Uh, but like but more of the like story baby. here is that yeah. is they're getting healthy. They they have a good product that's on the ice right now. I want to see some more of it. They have a good chance of getting into the playoffs as you, it goes you on. Got your, you got your wish too. Ryan Donato came back. Ryan Donato has been excellent since he's been back. He's, he had a, a, a chance for a, um, he got a, um, what do you call it? Shootout, not a shootout goal. Sh- uh, yeah, a shootout goal. Yeah. It was the, that it was the game that was after one the last show. But wasn't there a, pen- the goal. a penalty yeah. shot? He had a penalty shot was opportunity Penguins? and he failed against, against that. Penguins? But yeah. overall, he's been um, great. Yeah, it was against the Penguins. He won the game. He won the game for them. And yeah. I was like, I t- as soon as I saw yeah. that, I texted Nick. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, how about our gold goaltenders? Who do we feel most confident with? Well, I'll go with it, what Tom has to say. Of course. <laughs> uh, I like them both, I have to say. I mean... The, I think Rask is looking better, though, right now than Halak. The thing I like the most right now is that both goalies are able to bounce back after either terrible losses or just losses in general. Yep. And you see that that's, this is the second time that we've seen that from Hawk now because he had a really brutal loss earlier in the season back in, like, the beginning of November. Yep. And he came back. The seven-goal game. Yeah, yeah. And I think he came back and shut the other team out, I too. I think he did, too. Um, so he's had two shutout backup. Um, Fans shouldn't be complaining yeah. about Rask. Is that correct? Rask has been fine. Fans should have never been complaining about There's Rask. There's nothing wrong with Rask. Rask. He's, Rask is like one of those things where people just want to complain just to complain for nothing. He's been a decent goalie for the Bruins ever since he started. And it's like you said the last show. He, he got his big boy pants back. I'm a big kid now. <laughs> Let's stay in the garden. Let's go to the uh, that orange thing that bounces. What do we call that again? Oh, basketball. That's and right. it is round, not flat. So it is let's round? Let's get that, yes. Like our Earth. Well, it, it round. wasn't round on Saturday when the Celtics what? played the Pistons. Yeah. That was a terrible basketball game. That's what I heard. I actually didn't catch it. Yeah. They lost to them again? Yes. <clears throat> Here's my analysis oh, of this You're going to harp on them I'm for that one still... loss. There's oh, go, one. Go no, go ahead. After the no, win no, 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 streak, no, no. right? After the after the the... Phil is our basketball guy. No, no, go, go ahead. I'll, I'll jump in after. I want to hear what you guys they had an eight-game winning streak. Congratulations. You beat up on the bad teams. Oh, my you going to beat the big boys? I don't think so yet. Celtics, Nick's They're face, Twitter, team. block. They're a fraud. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, they, they've been up on some big boy teams. And they actually um, they played around with some of the good. Uh, not all those teams they beat up on in that uh, eight-game winning streak were, uh, were bad, per se. Some don't have the best record. But, uh, yeah, they did very well. And those they were supposed to beat, they beat handily. But I think... Uh, this is we're also in December, so it's going to be one of those things like come month 18 of the se- NBA season, which it always feels like. And the ho- actually, hockey doesn't. Uh, they both feel like it's long, but it seems like basketball. Seems hockey a little doesn't longer. feel long until it gets into the playoffs. Yeah. Basketball is just like I'm oh, frustrated on, that yeah. the Celtics and Bruins have played too many, too many games on the same day yeah. this she- season. When it's spread out, if you got the Bruins on a Monday and the Celtics Tuesday, yeah, and it's usually it's, so it's usually much alternating. Yeah, yeah. It was, I agree. It's been terrible yeah. this year. With how many? With how many of these? Like nine. There's a Thursday yeah. night classic example. Up oh, the Celtics and the and the. I can't follow both. I can't. Yeah. 
Just get two TVs on your eyeball. And that's Just why I've right been p- focusing more on the Bruins because I like the team better. Yeah. No offense. No, I, I would take all the offense I yeah, want. Yeah, your team's yeah. awful. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I understand. Hold up. <laughs> no, I, I understand from that Boston, uh, like, kind of, um, that kind of Boston attitude where these guys rub you the wrong way, and they shouldn't in, in some aspects. But, you know, once Mark is smart, uh, this is the, uh, the popular argument, and I don't disagree with it. Once Marcus Smart was infused into the starting lineup, things got uh, a bit better. Uh, they were fighting a bit more. And I've always been a Marcus Smart fan, and I'll take the, uh, the good with, uh, or the bad shooting with his good, mm-hmm. uh, just overall play. As Tom Thibodeau from uh, the T-Bulls would say, yep. he, just keeps, he just makes plays. He's That's the grit and is. intensity that they needed. Yeah, he, 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 he's, the kick, he's the kick in the butt yeah. that some of these – Guys who thought they were entitled, spoiled, privileged people sure. deserved. I mean, they are spoiled and privileged people. Oh, they they're, totally are. They're professional athletes. Absolutely. That's just that's and the nature of it. And they're young professional so you, athletes. Yeah. I, and so I, I agree totally with you on the Marcus Smart point. Yeah, no. Even when Al Horford or whoever's hurt Al comes Horford. back, out, keep mm-hmm. Marcus Smart there. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that's been switched around with possibly... Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Barnes. It would really probably keep like smart. Uh, Baines. 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 Sorry. Yep. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Uh, probably keep uh, smart. Uh, Tatum, Kyrie, um, Al, and maybe Baines in there. Yep. Or maybe and maybe you switch up. You know, uh, Tatum with uh, Hayward, or you switch up Baines for someone else. Like you keep it smaller, depending on what you want to do. Yep. And the the other their rookie actually uh, was pretty good. Robert Williams Robert has Williams. been good. Yeah, he's yep. great. He he, he, he hasn't the been ball tardy. Well. He's been showing up early. No, and he's been, <laughs> but he he does a great it's thing. Big big boy pants. No, no, no. But and he does. But he he goes a for big the ball. Boy he points, finds rather. the ball. Excuse me, not pants. He finds yeah. the ball, and that's yeah. one of the things like you want a player, especially in that who you know is not necessarily going to score all the time. And their role is to find the ball. Yep. Like find the puck. Like in hockey, yep. like one of the things is like who's going to dig it out and who has the nose for where it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, well, Mar- Marshawn had a great power play goal last night, or against Montreal, yeah. um, w- when he was, they we were hunting the puck. puck. Yeah, we didn't yeah. see that one. I mean, the yeah. the puck bounced right off of Price's pads, and yeah. Ma- Marshawn was there. I mean, unless it was uh, Jordan Caron, he would have been. Oh, oh, the net's over there. Okay, yeah. shoot it over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just gonna bank it over here. Anyway, back to the no, green no, but team. It's but it's true. And yeah. like, Marshawn's one of my favorite like uh, Weasley guys too. No. I and Smart is in that same vein. I don't think he's as uh, he's in that dirty at times. But well, you can't not, really be too dirty in basketball. But. I mean, you can. I mean, oh, you, you can. can. Yeah, like you the can. biggest, and it's not. But you're right. It, you can't be as physically dirty as right. much. It's they not can as do hard. like the little yeah, thing yeah, where you can put easy. like a leg. You put your who is it? Your foot underneath someone jumping, and you pretty much try to sprain their Manny ankle. Manny Machado plays basketball now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, a little bit. You just t- it's like a Scooby Doo episode. It just takes yeah. off the mask. It's like, oh, <laughs> But, uh, no, it's, I think they're an interesting team to watch, and they have enough people, like, rotating players. It's like, it's like either you're, I don't know, like a Seinfeld episode. You have, like, 80 different characters you can just infuse in there. Well, fortunately out. enough, we haven't uh, had to do it as much as they had to last year. No, and, but I, I like them. I like them all. I think they're all good players, but you probably could get rid of Rozier and package Rozier. And maybe even Brown. Maybe you can package something and get other picks or do something else. But I don't want to rock the boat with this team. I want to see where, how, long, how far you can take it, to be honest. My overall analysis is I liked, I've liked the unit, how they've been when Smart's been in, as I said from your point from before. There, there's an identity problem with the team, I think, from just looking at kind of how selfish they've kind of been in a way. With, oh, give me the ball. It's my turn. Me, me, me. Shoot the three. That's got to change. And I don't think this team is going to go on that big run that we're all expecting them to unless you trade away some of the blood that's there. So Rozier and Brown are two of the ones that I feel are are problems that need to be... Brown maybe not as much anymore, and I think that was overblown. Maybe Rozier... From his play. Yeah, I'm kind of done with Rosier. Rosier was great yeah. last year when he kind of had his role. He hates coming off the bench. You can clearly see it. Yeah. He has no rhythm. He thinks that when he has the ball, he's got to shoot. He's done um, some decent things in this uh, streak, and I, I think it's a matter of just laying things out and them seeing it as it goes. And I understand. I don't disagree. I mean, 
only thing is like, what do you get back? And see, that's the thing. What you, you don't know what, what you're you doing can to get, get back with stuff. Well, but even like, what do you want? I mean, that's kind of the thing right now. It's like you're more or less looking to get rid, maybe for a salary dump, or maybe just draft picks, or maybe another utility player. But yep. also another guy I need to mention. I apologize for yep. jumping no, on right. you, but Marcus Morris is another guy who's. He, he, he's he's my player. MVP of this season so far. I, I, you're not off. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, honestly, Marcus Morris is Phil been, and I are agreeing great. on basketball. No, he's a great, <laughs> no, he's a great player. I mean, we, we agree quite we a bit do, on this. It's just we, we come from different... Uh, I come from a constructed argument, and you just... I don't know where you you're both circle from. around I'm it in different ways. Yeah. In, knocking him off uh, Phil's like wrecking ball. ball. Phil circles ball. around it and gets to the point eventually. Nick goes... There. Let's get to the point. Not me. I like driving. I'm the little dude. Nick, Nick hey, faces, all of you, play better. Nick yeah. faces the facts. <laughs> Phil just swirls them around a little bit, puts them in the mixer, wine, and then picks them out one at a time. Facts, right? He adds that it, dash of vanilla in there at yeah, the right yeah. amount of time. Puts no, the sprinkles put it on. Marcus, just a scoop of butter. A scoop, doesn't that taste great? That's a good fact. Yeah. Uh, no, Marcus Morris is, has been great. His defense uh, can... Still needs a little work, but it's actually been pretty good. Yes. Uh, yes. And his when he goes to the basket, it's great. Jalen Brown's gone to the basket more. His free throw uh, percentage is up. And that was the thing I got on that guy. I'm like, man, you got to get better at the uh, charity line. It's called a charity line for a reason. Mm -hmm. And he has. And he, he's been driving to the basket and getting to the, the hoop. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to see more, more of Morris. Yeah. He's been – he reminds me a lot of smart, but with offensive ability. Yeah. He uh, smart. Maybe they is that a good him. way of looking at it? Yeah, because yeah. maybe they like oompa loompa smart. Yeah. Or Morris into smart, and then it's just like smart just the elongate. Or you kind of wish that both guys were kind of like constructed into one, because if you did, you'd have a phenomenal basketball well, I player. Mean, when, Isn't that what you just said? Not, well, in a way, <laughs> but no. But when they're on, when they are on the floor a lot, and they they do have that kind of um, they have that grit, and they they also like uh, Marcus Smart is a great uh, post player. He actually is. He's, he's pretty good. When he gets down there, he can make a lot of stuff happen. And uh, he also offensively can get to We've the We've talked about Marcus Morris and Terry Rozier and Brown and some of the others. Um, I think T Jason Tatum's been pretty average. Yeah, and he actually, sneakily, he could be a guy you'd be like, oh, I mean, if you don't care about the future, you can get rid of him and try to think about now. I, I like, out of the three of the Rozier, the Brown, and the Tatum, I like Tatum the most. I like that. I like Tatum the most because... The skill set kind of plays well with him. He seems like he's wiser beyond years, which means that he has a good knowledge of the game. If the right deal came along, I might entertain it. But I think that he, from the, just looking at the three of the guys that are there, seems like he's going to be more of the star. I am in agreement with that. What was you were talking about earlier, Tom, before we started filming? There are more Anthony Davis rumors. Oh, yeah, there are more in Anthony Davis rumors circling around about whether the Celtics are going to go after him or not. I don't know. I, I think that's, one thing adding too much. I think the only way you're going after him is you get rid of Kyrie. We talked about this on that last oh, show. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, I guess. I like Kyrie. I like him, too. I mean, that... Uh, Kyrie or Anthony Davis, you've already got a chemistry and a history yeah. with with Kyrie. Well, they were he talking... He wants to be here. They were talking right. trade. They were talking getting him in free agency. They were talking... Um, uh, like making another trade after if they couldn't get to him in free agency. Yeah. Well, what do um, I know? I'm I'm a hockey guy, so I. <laughs> I'm just they, amazed they, at they how like about. last year when um, Gordon Hayward went down, that they played a lot better team basketball, a lot less selfish basketball. I feel like it's a lot more. If I have the ball, I have to shoot kind of style. I, I, I'm, well, they I'm also beyond, have Kyrie in the. I'm beyond frustrated with the too. with the fact that I was watching the game. I think it was either was the Friday game of last week. I forget who they were playing. They it wasn't the game they blew out the um the was it the no who did they blow out like blew fifty out a something teams. fifty something was um, that the Bulls? Yes, oh, it was the Bulls. Did, yeah, it was the Bulls. Bulls. Yeah. I'm but just watching and it's at the line three three miss miss mm -hmm. miss make one miss another seven. Hit another one, hit hit two in a row, miss another eight. Mm -hmm. I have to say, from a lot of the this frustration, is all accurate, all these numbers are accurate, by the way. They probably are. No, I, I don't know about that. I think you're all. A lot of the frustrations that you might have with like Terry Rozier and, and Brown, mm -hmm. I'm pretty disappointed in Brad Stevens and how he's how he's called some of the game. I thought he was one of the best 
young up and coming stars coaching wise this year i don't know what's it, what's going on it's like a whole different different playbook he's got out this year that just doesn't seem to be working yeah no they and do. i don't want to criticize him that much because mm. i like the guy not that i know him personally but no. i just seems like he's got a, a likability to him Sure. But I, I don't like what I've seen from the coaching decisions going on. I mean, and you can also talk about just his, you know, lineups may, might not have been the best. And maybe he's, he's figuring out as it goes. And that's why I say, and, I, you know, I say and we feel together, it is a long season. It all, so, absolutely. Mean, and the next, maybe, and if by, and we're getting into January right now, so... If by mid January they don't have any really anything figured out or aren't as steady, they're I think they're there now. I really do think they're at a place where they understand where their core is. So as far as like their starting five and like then it's kind of like then you just kinda of mix everyone in. Right. As far well, as like quarters go. Plus, I mean, you didn't have Gordon Hayward for what, eighty eighty one and a half games or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. So yeah. Eighty one and three quarters, really. It may it makes sense that I mean, it really shouldn't take this long, but I mean, it makes sense that it it, it has taken a little bit for them to kind of get a. I gotta going. I gotta say I, I can't be critical with Gordon Hayward right now. You can't make a clear evaluation of how he's been because he's coming back from that horrible injury that he had. Mm -hmm. It's not fair to say Gordon Hayward hasn't been himself. Of course, he's not going to be himself. No, and he, I don't even think he needs time. And I don't even think he should be part of the argument. He I mean, shouldn't be. Well, I think the more crazier one not crazier or the the longer the one with the bigger sting i think is rosier and uh Kyrie. yeah i think that's the one that's more and i feel bad for rosier because he uh, admirably filled in pretty damn well and for the whole their whole playoff run yeah so i mean yeah and i can understand and it's tough but they have to now he has to now i take just a don't seat. feel like rosier and Kyrie can exist in the same team and they might not they might not I think that's got a lot of it because we know Rozier is a cocky person. Reminds me a little bit of like Isaiah Thomas in a way. Yeah, he does mm -hmm. have a little bit. He's of got that swagger, swagger yeah. to him a little bit, and it's like, dude, like, why are you swagging? Well, the well, scary I, Terry didn't really him. help that either. No, it didn't. It just it, he's got yeah, the, he's got an ego the size the size of planet Earth right now. Sure, yeah, and that's uh, whoever you want to uh, blame it on the team itself and people buying into it. But that was part of what well, the I deal was. Oh, I can see the fans, fans absolutely, because we yeah. uh, we we took Rozier and we. Made him out like he was a god, and you know what? We did the same with Isaiah Thomas too. Well, but they, but they both played Granted, pretty they well. They did play well. They did put in the system. Maybe it's a I system, think or maybe it's something else. Fans need to keep else, it in yeah. their pants a little bit longer. Well, before it, coming well, from we are in Boston. We are, are made. in Bo we are in Boston, so I mean, so it is, you, yeah. you, you can't really help it. Take a chill pill. Live Can't yeah. really help it. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, uh, it's weird. It's tough. Wait a. I tell everyone wait a bit. Keep watching. And just get patience, patience, patience is a but virtue. also rebounding. Yes. Rebound. I'll preach it till the day I die. It's just like teams that rebound win. Yep. If you have that one guy like Smart knows how to get back to a basket. Marcus yep. Morris, all Baines. those put back. Yep. Baines, uh, Tice. If you have all these people who go to the basket, and Williams, who give you second I, chance I, I, points. Defense I, I, I would like to see more yeah. of Robert Williams. To see too. how he can rebound and stuff. So I, it's awesome. I like I'm the excited. Pick. Yeah, he's I'm excited. A, I like I like I really him am. a lot more than I'd like from Brown. Tell you the truth, and Rozier. I'll be honest. Season. If you give, I stick him in, and if Big Al can't come up big in big games, average, 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 Al. average Al. That's what my buddy would say. He yeah. said, "Look out for average Al in Game Seven, and he was right <laughs> of the Eastern Conference. But Al, he can be great. But. Could be. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Last segment we want to cover very quickly is um, we mentioned at the very beginning of the show that the baseball winter meetings were in Las Vegas last week. The Red Sox announced on that Monday the signing of Nathan Evaldi. Yep. We Someone all happy got his about Christmas that. gift. <laughs> got a little extra uh, gift there early. That was one of my things in my uh, wish tree. Yeah. I'm happy with that. We also found out last week that Joe Kelly will not be back. He signed a three-year... Twenty-seven million dollar deal with the Dodgers. Good Trader. for him. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah. I Amazing that, postseason. Not going to take that away from Kelly. No. He was an anchor in the bullpen. I had full confidence in him when he was out there. He had a struggle of a regular season. His biggest problem has always been the consistency of throwing strikes. Um, I think the Red Sox they, they, they wanted him back at a two-year deal, but they didn't want to, you know, give it more than three. I, that's fair. That's fair. I don't know, that's, man, he, that's I, fair. I can't, that postseason run, I mean, I don't know about you, but I was astonished. 
But his, well, especially whole, after that, that regular bullpen, season. Yeah. The yeah. whole bullpen was just, it, it was their MVP. Yeah. Yeah. Hypocrite over here. I know, <laughs> we all, but we all, yeah. But hey, we all were I've, there, I've man. I've had my cake and I've eaten it. Yeah, Don't yeah. worry. But we're I, all there. We're all there. We all didn't think the bullpen would do it. I'm trying to figure out the next move and what the Red Sox make. You know, is it going to be locking up one of the young players? Is it going to be focusing their attention on maybe replacing the Kelly that's in the bullpen? I'm not sure. When Kimbrough is gone too, or no? We actually, there's a report going out that the Red Sox will probably wait till about spring training because no team in baseball is going to sign Kimbrough to a six-year, yeah, $100 million contract. Well, I kind of was hoping someone would, so they just take so all So if the Red Sox <laughs> give him a I'd be too. Yeah. He is attached to um, compensation, so yeah. if he does sign elsewhere, the Red Sox get a... Uh, they call it oh, a compensation like, pick. Oh, is it like a 1A or something? Something like that. Depending yeah. on how much they pay? Or? I think, though, after seeing Kelly leave and seeing what the market is right now, Kimbrell's not going to get six years, $100 million. I think what we'll see is Kimbrell crazy, will end man. up being back at a two-year, maybe it's a $25 million per season, and maybe they give him something like that. Oh. But they're not locking him up. Just give him a bag that. of oranges or something. I don't know if I want him back. I know I'm kind of with you on that. I know Norcam Jason would probably. Do you uh, feel <laughs> confident enough with what the bullpen is right now to give it to a Barnes, to give it to a maybe a Stephen Wright, a Ryan yeah. Brazier? I, see, I'm not. I'm not. As like your closer, yeah. or just in general. Yeah, as a closer, I, I'm not. That's why I feel like there's David Robertson uh, out there. Uh, there's Andrew Miller. There's Adam uh, Ottavino. That was from the Rockies. The Red Sox are really into. I would, I would like to see Andrew Miller come back. Yeah, I, I got Miller up my Could list. Could they get him? Is he a free agent right now? And I like David Robertson. I think Andrew Miller has one more year. Just to put another yeah, sting on, on the year. Yankees. Just yeah. to take their prize possession. Well, they didn't they? Who did they get from the Mets? They got uh, the Yankees from the Mets. Yeah, they? uh, their uh, starting pitcher or no? What was it? Didn't they in a, like a three-way trade? Didn't they pick up? No. Or did I drink no, something? No, no, no. There were, it was rumors. They, were, oh, they didn't okay. complete it. Oh, you thought they got Syndergaard? Yeah, no, that's what I thought. No, that no, was no, the no. big thing. No, yeah. the Mets and the Yankees aren't going to trade with one Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Yeah, but I, would be, no. I thought it was like a three-way The Yankees of. lost out on Evaldi, Patrick Corbin, and they had to go give J.A. Happ, who's 37 yeah. years old, oh, I didn't know that. a three-year deal. So congratulations to them. You they got Happ in there. They got CC in a wheelchair, Sabathia. Is he coming back? I thought he was going to retire. Oh, no, no, no. They love CC. They, they just, gave him a 24 pack no, and CC, said go party. CC's trying to go the Bartolo Cologne route. Yeah, of course. Keep pitching yeah. until he's 47. Like, yeah. Yeah. So just have I an idea of Yankee Twinkies fans. hooked up to. I got to tell you, I don't love my team. They have a great offense, but also like anyone, no, I, anyone with yeah. a wiffle ball back can hit 20 home runs in that park. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I, they should make a mandated rule and say, hey, New York, back up your fences. Yeah, exactly. Well, remember, then they're an average for, team. During the postseason, I was like, oh, man, they're all loaded with like 20 to 30 right. plus home run hitters. Like, oh, all right. So I guess a pop fly is. <laughs> I would say on well, my yeah, next thing had that one for the Red yeah. Sox Christian to Vasquez do, was like, okay. <laughs> I would say it's going to be locking somebody up. And I would say you probably got to dangle something in front of Mookie and say, hey, you know what, we know you like going year to year, but, yeah. you know, help us out here. We really want you here for as long as possible. The problem with Mookie is from my sources that I've heard from people close with the team uh -oh. is he's not big on long-term commitment. So, Just ask all of his three wives, yeah. Probably something like that, Um I don't know what to think on it. I'm not getting super attached with it. I actually think that the signing that's going to happen, that's going to be an extension here, is going to be Benintendi. Oh, really? I do. Who they switched to the leadoff spot, apparently. Benintendi, uh, Alex Korak said last week at the odd. meeting that Benintendi is going to be their leadoff hitter and Betts is going to be their two hitter. Makes sense if you think about it because they want to give Mookie more RBI chances. I get it. I get it. I think Makes Benintendi sense. will be fine in that role. Yeah. I, well, it also he, gives... Andrew Benintendi reminds me of a better man's Johnny Damon. Yeah. I mean, John Damon was pretty good in his day. Yeah. And putting Mookie in the number two spot also gives Martinez more opportunities to get RBIs, yeah, too. There you go. It does. So, so. That, that's okay. what they're looking at from stuff. I by no means think the Red Sox are done here on this World Series run. I mean, their team next year, they're returning basically everybody. Yeah. Fasten your seatbelts, folks, because... I am going to make the bold statement here 
and say that the Red Sox are the hottest <laughs> team right now to root for in all of the four different teams going on. They, right now, to me, have the best chance at winning another championship again. The Red Sox. I'm not saying they're winning the World Series next year again. Who knew? No, this they, time last year, both of us were, were, were going to look at each other like, what? Didn't think that was going to happen. That's true. No, that's Jaden, true. we didn't think We didn't think that was going to happen. He might like, yeah, it's in but there, but not as The Red crazy. Sox have the best overall team out of all four right now. Sorry, Revolution. Oh, out of all four. Okay, yeah, yeah. gotcha. Out of all four. Are the Revs done? The Revs are done, right? Or no? Who knows? They finished. I don't you know? No, I don't. Sorry, soccer. Sorry. What about the lacrosse? Who's the revolution? Yeah. If you want to go watch a soccer program, go to FS1. We're, we're just not covering it here. Sorry. Oh, man. Um, Slam on FS1. But, baby, it's cold outside. Yeah. Baby, it is yeah. cold outside. <laughs> oh, I'm not Burn. supposed to say that. Oh, no, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> Again, we want to wish everybody here a wonderful Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy New Kwanzaa. Year, Happy Kwanzaa, holidays. Monica, all that jazz. Monica is done. Yes, but Monica I'm sure is you, done. Okay. They did I'm have go. a happy one. I got word from oh, my, okay. from the Jewish intelligence agency. <laughs> they like their menorah too? Uh, they loved it. Okay. I thought you said manu uh, manure for a second. No, I'm like, no, 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 no. Menorah, no, no, yes. No. Like, oh. no, no, no. As my family, I have a little Jewish blood in me. I had it injected in me when I was 17. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, yeah, my mother had a great uh, eight crazy days. And dreidel, dreidel, nights. Dreidel, what is yeah. it? I made it out of clay. Is that the song? Yeah, that's yeah. one of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't try to co op my culture. Man, baby, baby, it's man. cold outside. <laughs> that's all I have to say. And now he's trying to. I, I'm going to go play that in my <laughs> yeah. truck as I leave. And then I'm going to go watch Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer tonight. No, that's, all right. Right. Yeah. that's all I got to say. It, right. It's the world we live in. Rudolph, they don't like Rudolph anymore. Well, I mean, Rudolph's kind of a puss. He's kind of like a wuss, don't you think? No, I love no. Rudolph. No, whatever. Uh, he's he's, kind he's of a the jerk. ringleader of Santa's sleigh. Of Satan's sleigh. It promotes yeah. bullying, all right? Um, no more bullying, please. <laughs> I guess. Santa will not be giving this, you this any gifts. This whole show is your... about bullying. It really is. <laughs> this, whole... this guy bullies everybody on Twitter, kind so. Of, kind of <laughs> don't get it. <laughs> well, not... I'll mute you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we hope you all have a great new year, a great holiday, and we will see you in 2019. For Nick yeah. Face, for Tom Smith, <laughs> and Phil Healy, we'll see you next time here on another episode of Face the Facts. Goodbye.